today we are back at the cake bake shop to check out breakfast. We'll be talking value, flavor, and overall experience, and at the end I'll let you know if I think it's worth the dine. <laughs> When I dined here the other day for dinner, I enjoyed it a little more than I thought I would, and I'm hoping to have the same sentiment about breakfast. When they first announced this breakfast menu, there were offerings breaking into the $40 price range. The prices have been reduced. The $42 Eggs Benedict is now $26.99, and with prices a little more tame, I had to come see what was up. We've got about a 20 minute wait until our table is ready, and with that, I kind of want to address some of the frequently asked questions that I was asked after my dinner video. So Currently, there are no reservations here. It's still in a soft opening phase, so I expect that to change in the coming weeks when they officially announce their like grand opening. So right now it is just walk-up dining. You'll head to the podium at the front of the restaurant and they'll let you know how long it'll take for your table to be ready. If you didn't want to wait for a table, there is a bakery right next door that you can get any of the like drinks or baked goods at. So all of the cakes, all of the cookies, all of the pies, all that stuff, including like a full like range of coffee products similar to like a menu that you would see at Starbucks, you can get just walk up at the bakery. They have a queue just outside of the bakery and they'll hand you out menus so you can kind of select what you want before you head in. But it is fun kind of getting to look at all of the pastries and all of the cakes and stuff before you actually make your selection. Another thing I was asked a handful of times was if there were any discounts, annual pass discounts, DVC discounts, cast member discounts. And right now the answer to that is no. Similar to the reservations here at the Cake Bake, I expect that to change in the coming maybe months or so. Usually when restaurants here open at Disney World, they start off with no discounts and then they'll kind of work their way into it. Like I believe Summer House when they opened, it was the same way. And I think now they do offer a discount. So I expect that to change. No annual pass discounts right now. And also a lot of questions about the dining plan. So no dining plan right now. I'm not sure if that's something that I expect to change or not, but right now, you cannot use your Disney dining plan at the Cake Bake Shop. Since two days ago, they have added a couple more tables outside, which is nice because the boardwalk area could certainly use that because all the quick service dining is outside. So you kind of need a bunch of tables. So they've added a couple more. We're gonna chill here and wait a couple minutes until our table's ready. All right, we have made it inside after just a short wait. This time around, I'm seated in the main dining room area. So we have a main dining room with like the carousel and the big centerpiece. And then there's a bunch of different rooms around the outside, including the bar area, which I don't know what's going on, but every time I've been going to a restaurant these days, they're trying to seat me as a party of one at the bar, which I understand you're trying to save space and stuff. But I specifically asked when I checked in, for a non-bar seat in the bar area or at the bar. So, but they tried to like actually seat me at the bar. So I'm a little confused. And personally, if I'm spending as much money as I'm about to spend on breakfast, I don't want to sit in the bar. I want to sit like a normal party in the actual dining room. So I don't know, it happened to me the other night at Mama Melrose, it happened to me again today. Um, so. I don't know how to feel about that. Just because I'm a party of one does not mean I want to sit at the bar. And I'm sure all of you other solo travelers understand that. And speaking of the amount of money that I'm about to spend on breakfast, a lot of people were upset last time for dinner when I did not show you guys my receipt and the bill at the end of my meal. So this time around, don't worry, I'll be showing you the bill so you know exactly how much I spent. Well, we will open up our Holy Bible here yet again take a look over most notably i want to mention that these breakfast brunch hours are from 7 a.m till 10 30. i was kind of curious because over on the my disney experience app it says that they actually end breakfast at 10 55 and then i remembered from the other day the menu actually says 10 30. so i was curious i asked the last seating for breakfast is going to be around 10 15 and they kind of give a bit of leeway so you can still order breakfast up until about 10 55. um but that could always change. I'm hoping personally, I feel like there should be a weekend brunch here with like a mimosa flight. I don't know. I know they would never do bottomless mimosas here. I feel like this is too fancy of an establishment for that, but this is a place that should be like a desirable spot to come for a weekend brunch. And I feel like ending the brunch hours at even 10.55, 10.15, that is way too early. I know people coming to Disney love a good brunch as evidenced by all the brunch options at Disney Springs, which are amazing. And I can imagine this would be literally the perfect spot to come for brunch. So 
hopefully that changes. Like I said, they just opened, so they're still like kind of working everything out. So that might change in the future, and hopefully it does. Well, we've got all of our food and stuff here, our lunch and dinner stuff, which we will be skipping over. And then we've got all of our drinks. I don't think I'm going to go with a breakfast beverage or a mimosa. How much are they? They used to be like, I want to say like $26, but now they're like $18.99. Okay, still, still quite pricey but a little bit more acceptable than before i think i might try one of the like non-alcoholic teas or something i don't know they have a bunch of like coffee and specialty coffees and teas but i i can't do coffee it upsets my stomach as much as i love it i cannot do just like straight hot coffee like that so maybe i'll try one of these like iced teas or these like fancy lemonade drinks here i was looking at this lemon tea cooler full disclosure i actually came to the cake bake shop bakery yesterday with my roommate because she wanted to come try out some of the baked goods. She is from Indiana where this restaurant kind of got its start. So she really loves this place. And um, we went over, I tried actually, maybe my favorite thing from the bakery that I've tried so far, the raspberry jam bar, it was so good. But I also tried this lemon tea cooler here, which is pretty much just an iced tea lemonade. And it was $8.99 for the small size. I see it on the menu in here as well, but I'm curious because like the iced tea and the lemonade, it says under them, refills included. But when you combine the two, it doesn't say refills included. So I gotta ask about that. Okay, confirmed, the lemon tea cooler does come with some free refills. So let's flip back to the front here and take a look over the food stuff. I'll kind of go over the whole menu with you guys. You can see right up here in a gold box are these cinnamon toast brioche bites. Not even in its own category. This is just in a gold box. So I don't know, that's, that's really intriguing me. Over here we've got some quiches and our croque madame, our croque monsieur, which I had the other day and it was pretty, pretty average. I'm interested in this because I do love goat cheese, the ham, rosemary, and goat cheese quiche, so we shall see. I don't know, I haven't made my selections yet. They have some breakfast cakes, which I think I will be indulging in a little later. They have a salad. They also have some egg dishes, an egg sandwich, which was originally, I forget how much, but like originally outrageously priced. They have eggs, any style, a classic eggs, Benny, a crab cakes, eggs, Benny, and then the sweets at the bottom, some Belgian waffles, chocolate chip Belgian waffles, this hala orange French toast, which I'm hearing is one of Gwendolyn's signature dishes, and then these gluten-free pixie fetti pancakes. Our fruit and granola, which the granola here caused an uproar, but again, price has been lowered. And then we've got some sides here. I do think it's important to note that pretty much all of like the egg dishes at least and like the quiche, those kind of things, they all come served with a side arugula salad, which is literally arugula salad dressed with like a lemon vinaigrette and Parmesan cheese, which for me personally, that's not my idea of a breakfast side. If I want a side for breakfast, I either want a meat or a potato, some type of hash brown, some type of roasted potato. That's more my style. I don't know about you guys, um, but I don't know if you could like kind of change out that salad for potatoes. I'm sure you can, but I'm sure they're going to charge you a little bit more. So I'm definitely going to inquire about that. But I did just put in a little starter for us. And I also ordered a beverage, the lemon tea cooler. This here is an iced tea and lemonade served over crushed ice for $8.99. And don't forget, there's also, of course, a ton of glitter on top. Nice and refreshing, but at the end of the day, it tastes like an iced tea lemonade, which is exactly what I wanted and what I expected since I already had it the other day. The only time I justified it this time around, the $9 iced tea lemonade combo, is because I'm sitting in and I can get free refills on it. And I enjoyed it the other day, so I was like, you know what? I could get free refills. It's a Sunday brunch video. Let's enjoy myself and treat myself. The only thing I didn't like about it the other day was this straw, although it is pretty and gold. Um, it is a paper straw and it is very, very poorly made. It literally completely disintegrated in my drink within 10 minutes. Um, so I may have to ask for another straw after, after like 10 minutes or something to enjoy this. I, I'll need, you know what? I'll get a new straw with every glass of iced tea lemonade I get. To go along with my tea here, I was told I have to try the cinnamon toast brioche bites. This is a pillowy brioche bread infused with cinnamon, brown sugar, and European butter, then toasted to a golden brown, piled high, and finished with a sprinkle of confectioner sugar, served with a side of our signature cream cheese frosting for $23.99. I don't know if I've ever really had a breakfast appetizer before, but I would imagine this is 
the correct way to do a breakfast appetizer. There are seven little brioche bites here, if you will. So there is quite a few, definitely a shareable dish. I would imagine you could share this between a few people for sure. And when I was told I had to get this, I was told that it's like the best part of a cinnamon roll, that it's like the inside of a cinnamon roll and it's nice and gooey, but you can control the amount of cream cheese frosting that you use because it's served on the side. Um, I wonder if you could get more because if I was actually gonna eat all seven of these right now, I, I would be loading up on this cream cheese frosting here because this, this isn't enough. I love cream cheese frosting, but I can't wait to dig into these. So let's grab our little, our little bite here. Oh, they're sticking to each other. I think that's a good sign though, right? Because that means they're nice and uh, coated in that brown sugar. Oh, the cream cheese frosting is hard on the top. It was put in there way beforehand. Um, but let's, let's slather this on here. We gotta, we gotta get a ton, a good bite with a bunch of that frosting. All right, let's try her out. Okay, yeah, these are, these are really, really good. When I picked it up, I was really surprised that it was like hard on the outside. Um, I didn't expect it to be as crunchy as it is, but that is because all of that brown sugar and stuff has really caramelized on the bottom there, made for a really nice crunch. And then the inside is really, really super soft and buttery and flaky. You can see all those layers there. It kind of reminds me more of a croissant than a brioche. Like, do you see all those, all those little buttery pockets in there? It's really good, the cream cheese frosting, fantastic. And yeah, it pretty much, the description was spot on. I'd say this does definitely taste like the inside part of a cinnamon roll, just a little crunchier on the outside, which I'm not mad about. It's like a cross between the inside of a cinnamon roll, a croissant, monkey bread. I don't know, it's really good. The stuff on the bottom does kind of get caught in your teeth like toffee does. And I've only eaten one and I've already used like half of this cream cheese frosting. And I feel like I didn't even overdo it on that one. Um, so you will definitely be needing more of this if you actually plan on eating all seven of these right here. But I'd say this is the perfect way to kind of start your breakfast here at the Cake Bake Shop. And while I am really enjoying these and I said I would get them again, which I would, $23.99 is ridiculous. I'll agree with all you people that are probably typing your comments right now. $23.99 for literally bread, brown sugar and cinnamon and cream cheese frosting is, I don't know, but at least you could share it with a bunch of different people. So there's that. And it was really good. So you kind of have to determine for yourself if there's value there. For me personally, like I said, there is, I'd get it again. Okay, so confirmed, you can get extra frosting because I used all of it for two. So there's definitely not enough there. You are able to get extra. However, it is getting close to the end of breakfast time and they are down to their last thing of cream cheese frosting and they have an order in for, for that last one. So my server was kind enough to bring me some pink vanilla buttercream and some syrup as alternatives, which I would imagine both would be good on there, especially the syrup. If you're like a maple syrup person, oh my gosh, the syrup has glitter in it. That's absurd. But, um, so that was really nice of them. Like I said, the service here has been really, really good. But now for the breakfast mains here, we're gonna get a good mix of sweet and savory. We started with our sweet. Now we're gonna get some savory. Uh, they have like egg sandwiches, which like I said, the, the price for this originally was stupid. So was the price for the eggs, any style, the, the Benedict's here, but I love a good eggs Benedict. Of course, they've got waffles and French toast, some quiches and stuff. I don't know, this is gonna be a tough decision. I love breakfast food. Okay, so I think I've narrowed it down here. At the end of the day, I am a savory food kind of person. So for breakfast, I definitely prefer egg dishes. And one of my egg dishes of choice is an Eggs Benedict. I love Eggs Benedict, and there are so many good ones across Disney property. So I had to order that. I have to see how this Eggs Benny stacks up to some of the best, like the Grand Floridian Cafe, Steakhouse 71, Homecoming has a similar kind of Eggs Benedict type of dish, similar, not fully Eggs Benedict. Um, but it's still, I, I love that kind of style of thing where it's like open face on top of like some type of bread product with some meat, some hollandaise, so good. So I knew I had to try that out. And then also I was interested in the quiches and my server recommended it. She said it's unlike any quiche you could get anywhere else because it's more like custardy. So it's like, ring a bell in my head, I gotta try it. And while I wait, I will be taking advantage of all these free refills I'm about to get on my $8.99 lemonade iced tea. Also, I'm wondering if you could get one to go. Usually like Disney restaurants, if you didn't know this, if you order like soda or something, 
you could always get a refill to go. They'll bring you a to-go cup. So I'm wondering if it's the same here. I will I will be testing that strategy. Also, potentially worth noting, I don't I don't really know if anyone else would get excited about this, but I do, but they have like branded to-go plastic containers. So this is like perfect Tupperware for home. So not only am I bringing some some treats home for my roommates, I've also I've also got us a new uh, thing of Tupperware. So <laughs> And it says the Cake Bake Shop. It's really nice. That might be something that only I get really excited about, but I'm ready for some eggs. Let's start by digging into this classic Eggs Benedict. This has a lightly buttered and toasted croissant topped with thinly sliced French ham, softly poached eggs, and signature hollandaise sauce and minced chives. It's served with an arugula salad for $19.99, but I did decide to upgrade it to a side of roasted potatoes for an additional $3.99. Yes. This Eggs Benedict is only, in theory, a couple dollars more than the Eggs Benedict that you get over at the Grand Floridian Cafe or at Steakhouse 71, two of my favorite Eggs Benedicts ever. It is important to note that those two Eggs Benedict, Eggs Benedicts come with a side of breakfast potatoes. And this doesn't, it comes with a cheap side of arugula salad. Um, and you have to pay additional money to kind of upgrade it to that potato side. So that adds, adds a little bit and takes a little bit away from the value of this dish. Let's see how perfectly these eggs are poached. Hopefully nice and runny yolk. And I think we're gonna have that. There we go. Oh. That's croissant as I'm cutting in. Nice and flaky and buttery and crusty on the top there. Got to get some of everything. There is a ton of ham on here, I will say that. There's a, quite a bit of ham. So we got to get a bunch of that on here with a ton of that hollandaise, of course. This is going to be a large bite. Let's see. Okay, here's what we're working with. You've got that super buttery, flaky, and toasted croissant on the bottom. Interesting touch, but I like it, opposed to the classic, just regular English muffin. I feel like since this is more of a French establishment, I love the croissant there. The hollandaise sauce, nice and lemony, has a nice little tang to it, and there is plenty of it on here. Eggs poach perfectly, and there's a ton of ham. But is there anything that's really making this stand out from other Eggs Benedict that I've had or other Eggs Benedict that I've had across property? No. It's just a pretty average Eggs Benedict to me personally, and it's not to say it's not good because it is. I, I love Eggs Benedict. It's probably one of my favorite breakfast foods after like a pork roll egg and cheese on an everything bagel. I have dreams about that breakfast all the time. But after that, an Eggs Benedict. It's, it's one of my go-to things. If I'm going out to breakfast, there's a very high chance that I am, I am getting an Eggs Benedict. And I do, I enjoy it, but it's just an Eggs Benedict, you know? And if I had paid what this was originally supposed to cost, which was $34 for this, without, oh my God, it would have been, so it would have been $34 plus the $3.99 upgrade to the potatoes. This would have been almost a $40 dish. If I paid almost $40 or even the $34 for this, I would have been pissed. But it's 20 bucks, it's a couple dollars more, or like $23, $24, um, but, I, I do understand what people are saying when, now that I've dined here twice, I understand what, when people say, you come here for the experience. And like, obviously the ambiance is way better here than it would be at Steakhouse 71 or at the Grand Floridian Cafe. The service here, not saying the service at those other two places is bad because it's for sure not, but the service here, I feel like is just more above and beyond. Um, so I understand that you're paying a little bit more for that and a little bit more for the higher quality of ingredients that they use at this restaurant. Would I get this again if I came here though? Probably not. I may wanna try something else. Potentially this quiche, I don't know, we shall find out. But let's dig into one of these potatoes here. Some of these potatoes are more roughed up than others. And when you kind of rough up the potatoes, they get more edges that allow them to have crispy edges. Um, so there are some with like those crispy edges, such as this one right here. But then there are some that are just Whole potatoes that just didn't get crispy really much at all. And that was the first one that I ate. It really just tasted like a potato with salt on it. It didn't taste like it had much other seasoning other than salt. Um, so I would expect a little bit more from the breakfast potatoes here. I feel like every spot should nail a breakfast potato and these are these are just average. This is the ham, rosemary, and goat cheese quiche. It's their famous custard quiche made with thinly sliced French ham, rosemary, goat cheese, and baked in European all-butter pastry dough crust served with, of course, 
arugula salad for $24.99. I was looking at this before and it looked like it was very jiggly. Do you guys see that? The custard? It's like a like one of those like custard cheesecakes. I had one at Morimoto at Disney Springs and it was nice and jiggly. That's kind of what you're getting here with that quiche. I like it. I had to make sure to get a bite with some of that pastry crust there because it just looks too good. They were right. The consistency here is crazy, but I like it. It's like almost like wet scrambled eggs, like runny scrambled eggs. You know when you make them and they're kind of just like really creamy and you don't fully cook them all the way through. So if you don't like that kind of like texture or feel, I would say this probably isn't for you. However, I do enjoy that. So I enjoy this quiche. Perfect hint of rosemary in there. It's not like overdone on the rosemary, but you definitely get a little bit of that rosemary flavor, which is really nice. The ham has kind of all gathered on the bottom and it's cubed up into nice sized pieces. Once you kind of get into it, you get a little bit of that tang from the goat cheese, which is really nice in here as well. A great combination of flavors and this crust. This crust, I need to try some on its own. Oh. The crust is where it's at. That's honestly to die for. Like, usually when you have a quiche, you want like a lighter crust. I would want even more crust on this just because it is that good. It's flaky and crusty. You could tell all the European butter that was used in there. That crust is so delicious. Yep, winning dish right here. Now this is also on the lunch and dinner menu. So if you don't make it out for breakfast, you can get it then as well, which I would definitely recommend. They actually let me know that the secret ingredient to the crust, I don't know if I'm supposed to be sharing this, is vodka. It like cooks right out, she said. So it's obviously there's no like actual alcohol content in it, but she said that's how they get it so perfect. and. I will tell you, it is it is perfect. This is delicious. This is this is probably the best croissant, or best croissant, best quiche I've ever had. Granted, I don't really order them often. I do enjoy the one from the Grand Floridian Cafe and the one from breakfast at Topolino's, but I never really order a quiche. But here, this would be my go-to. Oh, like would you guys just look at that crust? Like, can you see all of the layering in there and the little air pockets? It's like crisp and buttery just perfect I, I honestly i can't get enough of this crust i would just like to buy the crust on its own and just just eat the crust with <laughs> would that be weird i feel like i should also try this arugula salad here since i didn't when i got it for dinner it was on the side with a couple of my dishes for dinner as well um but i didn't try it then so i figured i should try it you know lightly dressed almost tastes like no dressing really whatsoever and i wouldn't really want this arugula salad here with like any of the other dishes like I wouldn't want it with the eggs benedict I do feel like it pairs nicely with this quiche this is like a nice lighter style breakfast and it goes well with the quiche but with like the eggs benedict that would have been like doesn't go with that and with that we have scored another takeout container again you're welcome roommates okay so let's check the damage here after all that food, our total is $87.28. Obviously, I will be tipping over 20% as well. So um, it's going to be over $100 here for breakfast, which I obviously ordered more than one person ever needs. I ordered to kind of show you guys a variety of things. I want to show you guys as many things as possible. So when it is just me, I do have to order a little bit more, but I do have some to-go stuff. Um, um, but yeah. That is the check for all of you who are curious. And yeah, I'd say I definitely got my money's worth on the iced tea lemonade here. They were able to give me one to go. It is in this cup because it's a little bit larger and they gave me a little bit more. So definitely appreciate that aspect of this. But it is a bustling morning here on Disney's Boardwalk. A lot of people out and about today. Also a long line for blue ribbon corn dogs. Maybe that's because they just got the giant mozzarella stick, which I had yesterday. And yeah, I can confirm it's, it's amazing, but it is time to head out. Not before I give you guys my overall thoughts on the breakfast though. And let's start with the service, which I mentioned earlier on in the video, but the service really does set the cake bake shop apart. I feel like all of the cast members in there are really just excited, excited to help out, excited to kind of lead you in what to get and just overall providing great service. Like they went kind of above and beyond in everything that I got both today and the other day. They've been super friendly, really, really great service. Foods, of course, you've got some hits and misses, just like with every restaurant. And while nothing I ate today was bad, it was, the Eggs Benedict was 
was pretty average. And um, at that price point, I'm not sure if it would necessarily be worth it. Um, I really enjoyed the quiche, really enjoyed those little cinnamon brown sugary bites. Those were really good. I would get both of those again. But the breakfast is definitely, like weirdly enough, the breakfast I feel like is more expensive than the dinner, which I guess kind of leads us into the value category of things. Is it really a good value for breakfast? Probably not. Breakfast tends to be a little bit of a cheaper meal, and um, there it's it's quite expensive. There are a bunch of other breakfasts that I would personally prefer to go to, like brunch over at the Boathouse, brunch over at Homecoming, at Wine Bar George. I also think I prefer breakfast at Trattoria, which is right next door, compared to the Cake Bake Shop. I feel like the value is better there, and just the food, like the amount of options that they have and like the quality of the food there, I don't know if the quality is necessarily better because they are using the best ingredients over at the Cake Bake Shop. But taste wise, I think I prefer the breakfast at Trattoria Al Forno, which I don't know if that should necessarily be the case given the price point of the Cake Bake Shop. And while I do think it's somewhere that I would maybe go every once in a while for breakfast. It's definitely nothing that I will be ever rushing back for. If I go back, I definitely feel like I'd prefer to go for lunch or dinner, get a bowl of that chicken velvet soup, maybe a Sammy or something. But I feel like, although still expensive, I'm not saying this place is not expensive. There are some things on the menu that are still outrageously priced. And then there are some things that I feel like the majority of the menu is pretty much on par with most other Disney restaurants. And if you haven't looked at the new new pricing and you're still on the old pricing, trust me, I was just as mad as all of you guys when I saw the original pricing of this restaurant, but it has been brought down to be very, very similar to other Disney restaurants. If anything, a couple, you know, a dollar or two, a couple cents more than like most other restaurants at Disney World. But overall, it's very competitive pricing when you compare it to the other dis Disney restaurants. Do I still prefer to go to Flying Fish for dinner as opposed to the Cake Bake Shop? no doubt about that but it is a fun experience and it is really really nice in there if you're like celebrating something for a special occasion i i would say go check it out especially if you have like young kids they'll definitely really love it in there the pricing of the kids menu has been brought down so it's definitely a place to consider it's not somewhere that i would be going back to like really really often but i would prefer to go back if i were to go which i will for lunch or dinner. But I am glad I got to come out and show you guys the breakfast menu. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know a lot of you guys have very strong opinions at the Cake Bake Shop. Again, as did I in the beginning before I ate there. But I'm curious as well if any of you guys have like had those strong opinions and then eaten there and kind of changed your mind on things and after the price change and stuff. So let me know down below in the comments. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video and thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers for supporting this channel. Thank you guys so much. If you don't already and you like honest Disney food reviews, I'm always gonna give them to you. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. I promise the next video won't be at the boardwalk because I feel like I've been living here the past few days.